How's it going everybody? Hope everybody's doing good today, the 11th of January 2020. My God, still a bit odd saying 2020. It's the first WWE pay-per-view of the new year, just finished. NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool 2, or 2020, or whatever they're calling it. I think this is like an annual thing, going back to Blackpool, going back to where it all started, baby. Where it all begins. Again, that was WrestleMania 20, never mind. WrestleMania 2020. That's this year. Again, bonkers to say. Anyway, yes, uh, great show. Superb show to start the new year. I'd like to get back into chatting about some more wrestling here on the channel. It has always been the one thing that's kept me sane, I guess, <laughs> been uh, doing you know all the YouTube stuff. I've always gone back to doing some wrestling chats, so hopefully this could be a, a pay-per-view review CD sort of thing. I want to do some form of podcast that is currently rumoured. I'd love to um, I'd love to capitalise on that soon, but you never know what's going to happen. Checking out the first one today, uh, NXT UK pay-per-view is always good because it's on here at a decent time. doesn't start at you know, midnight or whatever. Um, started at 5pm here, which again is a kind of odd time. It's a reasonable hour, you know, you can watch it and not be tired and you can now make a video straight after it, but it's just odd. 5 o'clock dinner time. <laughs> Usually it's like 7 or 8 it starts, but it's fine. I understand they're either probably going to be taping some more matches for next week's NXT UK. You know, I don't know if they're doing two nights back to back or they're just doing it all in the one go, but my God, that... That crowd must be absolutely exhausted after that show. If they're going to be doing more, of course. And then, of course, they have the new episode of Steve Austin's Broken Skull Sessions with Kane. That'll be a great watch. Kane's done very few interviews. Of course, uh, Austin did the Undertaker one, which was absolutely bonkers. And then the Goldberg one last month. So the Kane one should be equally as entertaining. So obviously that needs to be on at a, a decent hour. You know, that starts at eight here or whenever, you know, the show finished. It's about eight o'clock, or at least quarter two. Uh, yeah, overall, great show. I never like, you know, breaking down each match and, you know, I like the way that they applied the headlock here. But I just like to talk about, you know, the show in general when I, when I talk about wrestling shows and the vibe of it, you know, and just these NXT UK, take, just takeovers in general, but especially the UK ones, they're a bit closer to home for me, I suppose, so I can relate to them because I kind of know the athletes and the wrestlers and the performers a bit more personally, you know. Travelled all over the country to see a bunch of these guys and girls wrestle. And it's so good to see them doing well on this sort of takeover stage. Folk like Kaylee Ray and Viper, or uh, Piper Niven, and even Tony Storm, who I love um, for numerous reasons. Uh, Trent Seven and Tyler Bate and Wolfgang and the Coffees and even Volter. Um, it's just, like, you know, so cool to see everybody succeeding on this show. Not to mention all the people who weren't even on the show, like Ayla Dawn and Noam Dar and people like that. It's just uh, such a buzz watching, you know, these shows and seeing them there. First match was Trent Seven and Eddie Dennis. I must say, I've not watched any, you know, NXT UK in a, in a couple of months. And, you know, watching this show today, I'm kind of like, my God, why don't I watch this more? Because the product is awesome. It's so underground, you know, it's so like, where has this been? Why is no one else watching this? This is one of the best brands on, you know, the whole WWE. I guess it's just because there's not like a real buzz there all the time and then the takeovers come around and like the buzz is there again. I guess it's like any any pay-per-view or any company. You know, you need a big event and a big sort of match or a big moment, you know, to get a bit of buzz. And every every time the UK takeovers come about, the shows are always so good. I'm always like, yep, getting right back into NXT UK and watching every week. I just never do because there's so much, you know, other stuff to watch. You know, Ron Smackdown, I like priority because that like takes over all social media and stuff. Then you go AEW and then you watch regular NXT on top of anything else you want to watch, any New Japan stuff that's on or whatever. It's just, it gets too much, you know. But I always enjoy watching that, I just never, I never stick to it, you know. I went to the shows in Glasgow back in like April time of 2019 and I believe they're coming again in July here, doing more tapings in Glasgow, so I'd, I'd love to get back to them. It was always a good time. Any live wrestling is always good, but um, yeah, it's just that it's not been one of those ones I've always kind of made a point to watch and I think, you know, I'd, I'd like to say now that's going to change again, but you know, as I say, loads of stuff is on. It's kind of hard to keep up, but um, I've not seen any, all, all the build that I've seen, I've watched the Prime Target thing. Always think they're really good, especially if it's the UK stuff. You just see them walking about the barras and <laughs> walking about Royston and all that stuff. It's just, it's a bit daft. It's just like a bit close to home. You never expect to see that sort of thing on the WWE Network. Seeing Joe Coffey and stuff and seeing Gallus at Celtic Park um, makes me a little raging um, because I love Gallus and I'm not, obviously, I'm a Rangers fan if anybody didn't know that. But it's just it's still a bit weird seeing Celtic Park, do you know what I mean? Like, the, before they play a game and Ryan Christie is just walking off the park and just, I don't know, it's, it's weird. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, I should I should feel good about it because it's, yes, it's it's on WWE Network, but it's also Celtic, in it? But it doesn't matter. Um, it's still cool to see them doing the personal stuff. So I watched the Prime Target and I watched the build-up on that. 
In the first match being Trent versus Eddie Dennis. Eddie Dennis, I've never really seen much of him. I saw him in like the first takeover last year and you know, they were talking about how he was a school teacher and I always thought that was really odd. Doesn't look like a school teacher, but I think he got injured or something and this is like one of his first matches back. Certainly doesn't look like a school teacher now. He came out dressed as a fucking dragon and had like green all over his singlet and stuff. Just about a bit dad, a bit dad, a bit daft. Look at that dad, but a bit daft. But they had a good match. He gave him a razor's edge. Eddie Dennis gave Trent Seven a razor's edge over the top rope and Trent just landed on some mad security guard. I was like, my God, the first pay-per-view of 2020 and I've already seen something I've never seen before. It was absolutely mental, but it was fine. The only build-up I'd seen of that was that Eddie Dennis tried to shake his hand, tried to shake Trent's hand and uh, he wouldn't let go and he was like, you know, like a weird, a weird smile, which was weird. But yeah, that was, that was a good opener and then, you know, you go into the... Triple threat women's match, Tony Storm, Piper Niven, uh, challenging Kaylee Ray. Three girls I just fucking love so much, man. I've just seen them grow, you know, I've seen their careers develop over the past few years. And even Kaylee Ray I used to go and see her when I was just a wee boy and she's now just like the champion and she's just the best. And it's just great to see them. And they had an amazing triple threat match. So good. The buzz was there, the crowd were there, lots of false finishes. Piper Niven gave her a Canadian destroyer and Kaylee Ray sold it like an absolute boss. An amazing moment in the match and then just, uh, I don't know, it's just a great, it's so good to see the three of them do so well when it's such a good match. Then we go to Tyler Bate and Jordan Devlin, two great wrestlers and I'm just, in a, again, a brilliant match. The, the quality of this pay-per-view and the quality of the actual in-ring matches is just like, so good and it's a, it's a shame it doesn't get the buzz that other shows do, you know, and it's because it's not live and because they're taped well in advance and there's some unknown talent on there, but my God, the quality of these matches are just unbelievable. Jordan Devlin, Tyler Bate. Couldn't believe Jordan Devlin lost again. But I'm not the biggest Jordan Devlin fan. I love Tyler Bate, so I was happy anyway. Triple H and, and William Regal and Johnny Saint were like sitting up in the, the balcony for this match. And it's just weird, like, why, why did they pick this match? You know, the ladder match was next, and, you know, Wolfgang and Mark Coffey went out there. They were probably looking up and saying, are you still there? And they weren't, so I just thought it was a bit daft. Picking favourites? I don't know. But Tyler Bate won. Big airplane spin spot. You know, the big Fosbury, fop up, Fosbury flop off the top. Tyler Driver, you know, Moonsault into a DDT, all this stuff. Just a great match. And then the tag team ladder match was fecking nuts. Mark Andrews, Flash Morgan Webster. We got Grizzled Young Veterans. Great team. They made Imperium. And of course, Gallus. Um, it was a Gallus ladder match. It was great. It was, um, it was funny. They were going to do this spot on the outside with a ladder on two tables that were bridged on, on the apron and the ring. And uh, Andrews put Mark Coffey on the table and the table just broke so he was like um, what do I do this shit set up another table no nah, it's fine and so they were going to continue the spot anyway and Wolfgang was on the other side and, and Morgan Webster was going up the top of the ladder and Andrews just joined Flash Morgan Webster and they both swan tonned off the same fucking ladder through the table she murdered Wolfgang my god loads of good spots obviously a total mess but these, these four team ladder matches are always a total mess look at all the TLC matches and stuff Look at TLC 1 or 2, you know, they're like the perfect multi-man ladder matches, you know, and just, you're not going to get any better than that. So if you can get somewhere close to that, then you're doing all right. Gallus won, which was great. And then the main event, Walter and Joe Coffey. Um, just everything I expected. Just a total, like, um, a slugfest and um, just a brutal fight. Went on for ages, as these main events always do. Wasn't quite as good as the previous two takeover main events, but it's always good to see Joe Coffey in there. Walter is awesome as well. Walter uh, finally put Coffee away and the crowd were well behind Joe Coffee, which was cool. And then Undisputed Era came out and just uh, attacked Imperium, which was really unexpected and cool because they are going up against Imperium at the World's Collide, which I believe is the night before the Royal Rumble, which is cool. They're, they're making that an actual pay-per-view instead of a takeover and instead of just a daft sort of thing they do to access and just put on the WWE Network at random times, like last year it was like Tyler Breeze versus Tony Nice or something, it was like, why should we watch this? But now it's like a main, you know, thing. And Tony Storm is wrestling Rhea Ripley, Eli Dragunov is wrestling Finn Balor, those two matches will be good, and then of course you've got Undisputed Era versus Imperium, which, is, which you know, should be a mental main event. So yeah, good show overall, very good show. That's a pro wrestling show for you, ladies and gents. It's just non-stop, every match is different, but every match is quality, stories, the crowd investment, false finishes. WWE NXT UK definitely deserves a lot more buzz than it gets from myself and other wrestling fans. Hopefully that can be rectified after this show, because it was a belter. So yeah, I'll, I'll try and chat some more wrestling as we continue on through 2020 here on CM42 TV. But thank you so much for watching. If you did and if you enjoyed the show, let me know in the comments what you thought of NXT TakeOver. 
Blackpool does. What was your favourite match? What was your favourite moment? What would you What would you do at the next takeover? I don't know. What What would you do going forward in NXT UK? Let me know in the comments. And if you like what you saw, please subscribe, tell a friend, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at CM42TV. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you all in the next video.